Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Dino kuchinga mi zainese, muzita la Jesu Christu, amen. I greet your dear beloveds in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm excited to be in your houses today, uh, ministering the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. After such a long time and uh, a long break we had as LTBS, although personally I was ministering elsewhere, uh, but uh, as LTBS we had taken a bit of a break. Like we said last time, you know, it was also taking a toll on the guys, the, 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 the team as well, so we had to, to, to cut down a bit and stop and then we have now resumed with our services and I'm excited today that I'm back here uh, to minister the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in and uh, I greet you all. Uh, it's been a while, you know, the last time we had the service at our, at our place, which, was, uh, which is in town, Presbyterian Church. It was amazing, uh, you know, we, we, quite, we had quite an interesting time teaching uh, uh, and ministering the word of God. We saw quite a move of God, uh, move of the Spirit during the services. But today I'm excited to continue with the services where I'm talking about uh, the ministry or the ministration of the Spirit. We are, we are zeroing, on, zeroing in on the issue of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's more like an expose on who the Holy Spirit is. It's more of a mentoring on, 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 on people's relationship with God. You know, that, that's I believe what my focus or what God has called me to do predominantly. Uh, I also want to, to say thank you to all those who are tuning in. Uh, Thank you to, I see Danai, I see Alexander, I think Xander he tuned in twice, he's the OTBS as well. Uh, I see Nadia Chibaya, Nyasha Chataur, oh yes, my name. I would want you to tell me, let me know who you are and where you're watching from, uh, so that I also acknowledge you. But thank you for tuning in. Today, we, unfortunately, we don't have music, but tomorrow everything will be in place. Uh, see you, Sam and I, you know. Uh, he's not here today, and Uncle. Uh, no one is here today. I'm here with uh, with Dan. We are just the two of us. <laughs> just the Dan and myself doing everything today. But uh, see, we are ah, we are we are joy connected as well. Yes, yes, yes. Uncle Sam, I wish you were here. You know, I know, I know, I know. Some of Hallelujah. So that we we do these things well. But anyway, we are we all the more will be. We'll be having a good time, but I, I hope you've got a open in the paper because what I'm going to do, or what I will be doing is is just simply leading you into a, a teaching that will usher you, because I think the main thing that I believe as an individual that ought to be done in a person's life is having a personal relationship with God. So I'm going to ask you, or like I said, let me know who you are, where you're watching from, and if possible, you can also uh, share the message, invite other people, you know, those whom you know, you know. If you know someone who wants to have a personal relationship with God, has been struggling in their relationship with God, I, I believe this is a session that will bless them, that will, you know, you know, ground them. Because I believe a relationship with God matters. Once a relationship with God matters as well, so, so we, we, we thank God, we praise God for this moment. I see Rumi Zai Noira, I see Chibedu Patrick, and Ngari Vume Norin. Ah, oh, from Dubai. Thank you for tuning in, my little sister. It's been a while. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, so we, we, we thank God. I hope. I, I, the other thing, before I begin this teaching today, you know, I wrote here fostering a deeper relationship with God. Our theme, you know, scripture, we are, let me, to, for today, I'll be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. So that's what I'll be looking at. So I want you to, to make sure you, 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 you're connected. My, my Matika, I see Shud Gi, yes. I see Amai Wakoma watching. Ah, that's a. Uh, Swaziland, I see Elvis Musakwa tuning in. Ah, thank you for tuning in, young man. So yeah, that, that's uh, that's interesting. So we, we we Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse fourteen will be my theme scripture for today and all the other sessions anyway. But we'll be changing, you know, here and there. But I'm, I'm mainly focusing on our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We'll be looking at a lot of things. That, like I said, it's more of an expose on who the Holy Spirit is. It's we are looking, going deep and looking into who the Holy Spirit is. I have several questions that I wrote here, to, you know, that I would also ask you at the end of this session. What is your relationship with the Holy Spirit been like lately? What is your relationship with the Holy Spirit been like lately? 
what experience have you had with him? Can you name, can you tell me in a personal experience you've had with the Holy Spirit lately? What, what, what experience have you had with him? Remember, remember what you said the previous broadcast when we were at the venue at Presby Church that we said, I see Fortune Man, thank you for tuning in. You know, I'm just saying this preliminarily wise so that we, 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 we are in the, on the same page. A life without an experience with God becomes void, not only of power, but of excitement. What, what juices uh, me personally and most of the people I know who are passionate about God is knowing who God is. Having the manifold mysteries, the revelations of who God is being revealed unto you. It, it matters, it is important that you have a personal experience. And when you talk of personal ex experiences, we're not just talking about a one-time, you know, kind of thing. Oh, I felt the presence and I felt down. I, I've often taught on the Holy Spirit and saying this, that when, when it's, when it's a, a relationship, it's an experience, it, you can experience God daily. I've seen Christians who fall in church and the like, but on their own, they possibly can't fall. They can't experience the same presence that they had in church when they're on their own. That becomes a problem now. I believe what you experience in church or what you, what you experience as a ministering should be like, a, a, like the example I always give, it's like, you know, a battery, you know, that is a, a car battery that's, that, that's gone flat. It has nothing on it. Then it's being jump-started by another battery that has got, you know, you know, power within it. That's what we're simply doing. So we are trying to get you to a point where you can experience God as an individual daily. I, I started this journey or this uh, pursuit of the Holy Spirit, I think, in 1996, after I read the book from, uh, you know, from, from Ben Hinn, you know, Good Morning Holy Spirit. I read it that, that, that time. It changed my life. It transformed my life. I then started, yes, I did the relationship. I was praying all night. I had been in ministering healing, you know, ministering to people, but I, I didn't have that life, that, that, that thing, that connection with God. Christianity was a bit boring, you know, I had been, I had, I had recently, you know, two years prior that I had come from the world and, you know, it was like boring, but what made it exciting was having this relationship with God, that wow, I can, I can connect with God on a personal level. So, so, I wouldn't pray anymore saying, as if he's far from me, you know, he now tabernacles in me. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, you know, you shall be a child of the Holy Spirit. So when I have the Holy Spirit, I've got the Father in me. The Father now dwells in me. So, 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 the other question I have here, like I said, the second question was, what experience have you had? I'm asking you, what experience have you had with God? Because experience is a result of revelation. If there's going to be an experience with God, an experience with the Holy Spirit, it's Pre, it's see, mainly determined by the revelation you have of who he is. You will never experience what you don't know. Revelation is what comes before the experience. Otherwise, that's why at times you see people tend to, 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 to have a relation, you know, they, they, they experience God. Like, wow, when we were growing up, you know, after I got saved in 1994, one of the things that I happened was, you know, I, we like, like, you are like, wow, this is exciting. I've, I've experienced God. This is quite something. And, and uh, when I'm home, there's nothing like that. So what the mistake I made was I would wait for another Holy Ghost session. I would wait for another man of God to come from Harare because generally most people who are moving in power are coming from Harare. You see, so they would come so, 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 you know, people would laugh that, you know, God resides in Harare, but he often visits Mutare, Blawayo, and all the other places. Because people would come from Harare, would come and demonstrate power. You would have this, this amazing, you know, unction, you know, for almost two to three days after the session. But after that, it would wane. To just you know dissipate and disappear like that. Then I I got the revelation after I read the book from Ben Hinn, my pastor Ben Hinn about that talks about good morning Holy Spirit. There's another one called the anointing welcome Holy Spirit. So they transformed, they changed my perception, my view of who God is. Now wh wh what I want you to know is the revelation now made this a relationship a stay what I call a staying relationship where I could easily experience God on a daily. I'm telling you. 
If you ask my wife, I have this relationship with the Holy Spirit where I don't talk to him or about him when I'm in, a, when I'm in need or when, 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 when it suits me. But I've had this relationship since 1996. It has been an amazing journey where, 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 where he becomes your, your closer personal friend or confidant. So if you're interested in this, this is what I'll be teaching. I'll be bringing, it's more, like I said, an expose, depths or, or manifold revelations of who he is, what he has done in my life. You know, I've had experiences whereby, you know, most of, if I want to experience him, it's easy. I, I just sense him. Because he's here, I've learned, I'm so accustomed to his presence, to the person of the Holy Spirit, such so that his presence manifests easily in my life or around me. I, I literally sense him without much you know, I don't need to fast that much for him to be there because I've gotten to know him. I have the revelation now of who he is now. So I'm trying to lead you into this thing that, you see, it makes you dependent more on God, more than on people or more than on what people can do for you. You see, you, you become, he, he becomes number one in your life. So, so the other thing, like I said, if you have had any experiences with him, number three, what testimony do you have of the relationship I'm mentioning? I think one of the craziest things I've ever done was when, when my son was, I think, four years old, I think, I can't remember, between four and five years old. I, 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 he, I can't remember what he had done, but I then spanked him. You know, spanky, spanky, you know, we spanked him. And he's laughing because he's one taking the video today. When I, when I spanked him, I went back into, I was praying actually, I was meditating, so I went, spanked him, then went back and slept. Then when, when, I, when I did that, I want you to know something that happened in me. When I went back into the mode of meditation, I believe strongly, when I was meditating, boom, I, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, go and apologize to him. You know, that's how my relationship with the Holy Spirit is. I'm so sensitive. If he tells me to apologize, I will, then and then, there are times when I know I must apologize, but there are times then when you are so arrogant and, you know, egocentric person, kind of a person, then you, you know, you know, ego takes over and you decide not to. But he then said, you have to apologize because you're teaching him my nature. When he thinks of God the Father, you are the next best person that you look at. Then I had to go and do that. That, wow, I'm, I, 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 I'm also a human being. I make mistakes. But I'm I'm, well, my point is, he, he corrects me on small things. That's what I think a relationship ought to be. It's not on big things and I'm waiting for that million dollar contract. When I'm waiting for that big door, the crossroads of life. It's on small things on a daily basis. They accumulate, it becomes cumulative to the big decisions that I'm going to make. David, when he fought with Goliath, he said he gave reference to the bear and the lion in the desert. The same thing with you. If you have not had the relay, you know, you know, things or ways in which the Holy Spirit is correcting you and you're moving with Him on a daily basis, it will be difficult and impossible to pick Him on big things. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? We, the world currently is in a. Um, is, 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 is in a, we are in a fix. And what we need to understand is, there are times when God will tell you, don't go there. Don't, you know, there are places where you possibly meet a person with COVID and not know it. God can heal you, but God can also cause you or make you to, to, to you know, reveal to you where to go, where not to go, who to see, who not to see. You see, it's important. It's important that he, he becomes involved in every facet of your life. So what testimony do you have with the Holy Spirit? I'm not talking about a testimony about last year. It is to be on a daily basis. It is to be something you, 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 you are experiencing on a daily basis. Then, then the other thing is, I wrote it, who is he to you? Remember, you are created for fellowship. You are created to fellowship with him. Who is he to you? Wow. Then, then listen to this. Listen to this. I also wrote the last question. I said about that question before I, I get into the teaching is this. Symbol is this. How do you view him? How do you view the Holy Spirit? Now, now why I've said this, generally, most people, they say, the Holy Spirit, it is here. He is viewed as, as, as possibly a force, is viewed at times as power, as an influence, as an energy. He is mentioned at times, people refer him, it is here, you know, like, 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 he, 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 some sort of thing. But it's not like that. So, the, the, which takes me to what I'm going to share with you. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. You know, it's one of my favorite scriptures. 
Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. There is a version, must be the English standard version. It is no verse 14, it is verse 13 and 14 together. But KJV and KJV and IV, listen to this. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. So he's saying the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, people are generally familiar with that. We, we, we know about the grace of God. If you've heard me, if you check our teachings on Facebook, you can go back. We have taught on the grace of God. And the love of God. You know how passionate I am about the love of God. Hallelujah. My fellowship with the Holy Spirit, my understanding of the Holy Spirit, got me to a point of having a personal revelation of the love of God. Not the love that is weak, but the powerful love of God. The impenetrable love of God. It's powerful that no demon, no power, no satanic power can go through the love of God. It, it, it's a rev everything is about revelations. So, so, so listen to this. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Then he says, the fellowship, so when he says the love of God, he's made, he obviously referring to God the Father, the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's mentioning the Godhead in one verse. And he also now mentions, and the communion or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Oh, now, what he's saying is two things. Number one, he's saying the fellowship of, or if the fellowship of is his fellowship, the car of, the house of, the money of, the what what of it belongs to. So is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Be with you. So the fellowship is supposed to be with you. God has made, has created, has made, you see, has created you for fellowship. God wants you to fellowship. He has, he has made the reservations within himself, within the kingdom of God, so that you can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There, there, there's an opportunity, there's a leeway for every child of God to fellowship with him because it's his fellowship. It's not your fellowship. It's his fellowship given to you so that you can fellowship with him. In other words, God wants so much to fellowship with you. Listen to me. God wants so much more than you, you, would, you could ever think or imagine. More than you would ever want to fellowship with him. He wants so much to fellowship with you. Wow. God, no. Like I said, you know, if you want a proper, strong, solid relationship with God, it's, you see, Christianity is about a relationship with God. It's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Ghost. It's Him fellowshipping with you. It's Him fellowshipping with you. It's the Holy Spirit fellowshipping with you. He is a fellowship. So, you can make yourself, the other time, then, as I move forward, I also share, you know, about yielding to the Holy Spirit. Because we are talking about the ministration. So, next week, possibly, I'll talk about the yielding. Yeah, how we yield or surrender to him so that we experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So it's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to fellowship with you. He wants to, 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 to the way the, I like the KJV, it says the communion. Now, before I give you the definitions that I have always given, I want you to know something here. It's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you. So why is it you, you have not heard from the Holy Spirit lately? Why is it you have not you have not you have not you have not had or had experiences with him? It's not, the problem is not with God. The problem is not with the devil. The problem is not with the people. The problem is not with, even with the season. The problem is the revelation you have of him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you can create an atmosphere in your personal life. In the lives of those around you. Man, nowadays, is the, 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 you have no option if to be at home. So to create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is welcome. Because he wants to fellowship with you. But the question is, how open are you? How willing are you? How, 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 have you created the environment that is, that is conducive for him to manifest himself in your life? Ladies and gentlemen, are you getting what I'm saying? It is important. 
that you understand this verse is the fellowship. Now, let me let me let me go down a bit and say, remember, we're talking about the ministry. The, the, the idea is you need to get to a point or a time where the Holy Spirit is ministering unto you. Where is Mari? We see Mushona today, Kushumira, where Mari Bano Shumira, Moyamuchin, Achi Shumira Kunewe. You know, Acts chapter 13, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, it talks about when they ministered unto him. But there's also a time when he ministers to you, when he's touching you, when he's, when he's revealing himself, when he's waking deep in you. Now, when he says the, the communion of the Holy Spirit, listen to this. The word communion is the Greek word koinonia, which means friendship. In other words, you can have, do you have, let me ask you a question. Do you have a friend that you, you know, this is a friend in me? And a friend indeed. This is the best friend I've ever had. I, I, I've been friends with my with my with, with, with my one with my friend Philip Masha for I think it's, for, it's almost twenty eight years now. We've been friends, close friends, twenty eight years now. The, 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 the thing is, if you are like me, your friend. Some people are unfortunate they don't, they don't have you know friends like like most of us, you know. But the the thing is, if you have a friend. That friendship never started overnight. It is started on a particular time, period, time, day, whatever, minute, second. But then developed as you gave time, energy, resources to it and attention to it. What matters now is if we can develop relationships, relationships with the people on earth, physical, natural friends, you must do the same with the Holy Spirit. Give him time on a daily basis. Every relationship, every relationship that has stood the test of time, it's because of time invested, effort that you've put into it. So it's, if, 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 when we say friendship, is the friendship of the Holy Spirit. He's your friend. He becomes your... When you say, when you say communion, it's friendship. Friends, they talk. Friends, they can, you see, a friend is someone who really tells you the truth. They'll tell you, man, this is not it. This is wrong. That's what a friend is. A friend, you talk, you talk deep, stuff from the heart. Recently, I think I was, I was, I was with, my, with my chef, for example, last week, must be on Sunday. I think we just, he came to me, just went around a bit. It must be on Monday, if I remember. Just, we just went around. The, then he spent the time, and uh, Saturday, my, my son is saying, no, 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 you know, anyway. Whichever day, I can't remember, it's Saturday or Sunday, we might argue with him here. But one of the things I, 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 we had was we had, uh, almost the whole day, we, we, we didn't talk much in terms of, uh, or try to initiate or write notes down, what am I going to say to him, what, possibly he also writes something down, what am I going to say to him. But the, the key thing is, it's spontaneous, that's what friendship is. Because, because of time you've invested in, in friendship becomes spontaneous. You don't prepare to talk to a friend. It's a relationship that has always been there. The same thing with the Holy Spirit. He is your friend. You must, you see, they can take a that, that, That's not friendship. You can't have ministry, full ministry with him if you see him, talk to him once in a while. Just a little talk with Jesus. Just, you know, if I get the chance, I'll talk to him. It is to be a relationship. You see, it's, it's, I was talking to someone, was it last week? He was asking me something. I was telling him, there's nothing wrong with your praying all night. There's nothing wrong with going for all night prayer meetings. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's something wrong when it ends there. You see, I don't just talk to my wife today, then I will say, we'll see, I'll see you after, after a month. That's not the relationship. It, you have to acknowledge him. You have to, 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 to nature that relationship on a daily basis. That's what friend, friendship is, is. Is friendship literally is. You can be friends with him like you're friends with a normal person. Wow. The other thing is companionship. When you talk of companionship, because a friend at times might not be there, but when you talk of companionship, the word for companionship talks about him being there regularly or on, 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 on a regular basis, having him. Having him there. Uh, you know, uh, if you've you heard me teach Bible study Gwanga about the Holy Spirit, I always say, I'm trying to get tutor. If I send my son to a, to, 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 for extra lessons for a teacher, you know, he's, he, he, for tutoring, he's doing his work. 
and he decides to ignore the person who's trying to help him to get better grades. Obviously, that would discipline him. Obviously, I'm not be happy. The teacher would be like, <laughs> I can't, he, he or she can't force himself or herself to visit a church by again. They can't do that. It's the same with God. Why you have not been experiencing God is because you have not given him time. He's the, he, he remember, John chapter 16, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, he's the teacher. He has come to teach us. First John chapter 2, verse 20 and verse 27. He, the Holy Spirit has come to teach us, but he can't force himself. Even, kutela kwa hongu ndita yungu kuna isoka. Ita kudaro mu prayer session, ita kudaro pono na mate, ita kudaro pono kwa wenga shoko, kuti mudzidzisi wangu chui ya mudzidzisi. After a week or so, I'm telling you, you will start to see a change in your personal life. Do you know, one of the things that as I was preparing for this that God was sharing to me or impressing upon me in God speaks to me was, was this. Most of the people who, are, who want to change from certain weaknesses or whatever, any weakness you might have in your personal life, you might fast and pray, but the one who causes the changes is the Holy Spirit. I've seen the people fast and pray and they will do exactly what they've been fasting and praying against. What you need is to have a solid, growing, deep, intense relationship with Him. That is, that you initiate. You initiate. You make yourself, the teacher is there. It's his fellowship. He can't force you. You have to be willing. You have to give yourself. So it's an insult. Let me listen to this. It is an insult to the Holy Spirit or to God the Father. I love you, but you have not given yourself time and chance. You have not given him time and chance to minister to you. You see, you are always busy. You see, people are busy. Even people lockdown down so people have got enough and ample time to pray, but they don't have time to talk to him. They can listen to 10, 15 preachers, but they can't talk to God more than 10 minutes. They are all over. But my preachers don't have a Facebook because of lockdown. Muni said to go on Facebook. To maintain and keep the ministry and touch more light. But the challenge is most Christians they are all over. But when was the last time you know at times what I do, in I really pray, you know, kneeling or whatever. I, I really I, I prefer sitting or sleeping on my bed or on my or, or on my bed. I, that's how I pray. The idea is to talk to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's about friendship with him. If you've got a friend who is more closer to you than the Holy Spirit, you are in trouble. Let me repeat this. If you've got a friend who is so close or closer to you than the Holy Spirit, you are in trouble. Hmm. What does the Bible say? There's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That's the Holy Spirit is talking about. You need to have a strong... Let me, let me repeat this thing. If you've got a friend who is a friend you need to get to a point where he is so you have, I have friends, several friends. I have several friends. But of all my friends, no one can come closer to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Then the other way I said companionship. When you talk of companionship is when 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 he's there, he's always there. That, that's that, that's why that's why at times when I'm just whether I'm in the bathroom, I'm driving, and where I, I just say, Holy Spirit, I know you are here. Just say it, it doesn't kill. I know you are here. I acknowledge your presence. Period. He's a companion, he's always there. He, when you say companion, is one who is alongside, who never leaves. Don't go an hour, two hours, the whole day, the whole week. You have not even talked to him, but you're praying. How do you pray? He's one who, who reviews the scripture. He, how do you read the Bible without him? He's, only, he's the one who wrote it. The inspiration behind the scripture, the author of this book. When you are praying, he's the one who prays through you. For we know not out what to pray for, as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit helps us. It's his duty, it's his work. So God has given you a tutor, and you pray without him. You read the Bible without him. And you expect godly, biblical, scriptural results. So you can't have an experience with him. Mm -hmm. My God. Then the other thing I wrote here is, is, is comradeship. I will not spend time on that. We'll look at it some other time. When, when we talk of comradeship, it's, it brings out the element of mil, being militant. Being another the element of being militant. Being a child of God in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, He imparts within you the ability and power of God. Boldness. 
boldness, listen to me, boldness, mainly, there's two things within. It's understanding how much God loves you. Number two, it's, 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 it emanates now from one deep, intense relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you don't have a, a, a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, you, you move around always. My children laugh at it. My children they always laugh at it. Like a headless chicken. No, you're always moving around like headless. Because you, 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 you don't have, you're not bold. Because your boldness is depending on what people say, what a preacher say. Not, not you, the nature of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. I get what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. You need to, 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 to focus on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. It matters that your relationship with the Holy Spirit becomes stronger, you know, like your Satan semen. This is the Bible says the people who know their God, the Holy Ghost, shall be strong and do mighty exploits. You can't be strong if you don't know him. You can't be strong if you don't have a relationship with him. So it's 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 comradeship, power, and and, and being 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 forceful, you know, being immovable, unshakable. It's a result of you want a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Then the, 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 other, the other thing I have is here is this, is this. If you're going to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, the way fellowship or communion also comes from the, the same Greek word communion. This is also is also rendered intimacy. That's what, that's why I'm headed. This then I will close now. Listen to this. When you talk of intimacy, this is if you check Daniel eleven thirty two, the people who know they are God. The word K N O W there. It it's, it's it's the same word where we get intimacy. When they say no, it's experiential knowledge. It's a knowledge that that, 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 that that has intimacy with it. You become one with what you know. The people who know their God, they should be strong. And do exploits. You there's to be intimacy. The, 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 I was reading the Hebrew word, checking, you know, the, 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 the roots words and the like. One of the things I, I got from there was Yada, you know. You know, which which it reveals or denotes something to do with uh, once the relationship between a husband and the husband and the a husband and the wife, how they know each other. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. You have to get to a point where my friendship with Philip, my my, my friend, and my friendship with the Holy Spirit, my friend, my wife, different levels of friendships. But intimacy is reserved for my wife physical, romantic relationship is, is. That's what you need. With the Holy Spirit, you must get to a point where you miss being alone with Him. You miss being in the, on that corner, in that closet, or that place, or that, place, that, that, that couch, or that bed, where you sleep in fellowship with Him. You, you get to a point where any person I've talked during the day, that, that, that what I have or what I've had with that person can't be compared with what I have with the Holy Spirit. Then you are set for change. They will be changing your life. I get what I'm saying. You, it's it's something deep. You can't see. You you can't. I can't explain how I feel for my wife. I can't put it in words, and the words can't be enough. You know, I love. I mean, already I love. I can explain it, but it's deep relation. Intimacy is more than just you know, you know, you know. Saying I love you, you can tell when a person is faking love. Is the same thing. Do you think? Do, let me ask you a question. Let's ask you a question. Do you think, do you, you, you who's watching, do you think the Holy Spirit doesn't know or is not aware of the nature of your love or the, the dimension, the level, the depth of your love towards Him? You know, times I think like, like that when I'm praying, like, there are times, let me, let me give you some, there are times when I'm praying, oh, I, I love you, Lord. Then I, I, I really know in my heart, there is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You, you, you are lying. You know, you don't really love me. You are just trying to allow us that you do something. Then when I do that, when I get that sense, I switch off my phone and I just begin to focus on him. So that I know that I know that I was faking it. I was just saying it because I know that I need a breakthrough. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need to go to fight my battles. You know, oh, left, right, and center, man, right, oh, Lord, you know I love you. Oh, no, 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 no. I have to say it from the heart. I have to give him time. Lord, I repent for not having given you time. For saying things I don't mean for my heart. 
for expecting you to do stuff on name and all. You, you, you begin, that's what, that's the nature of a relationship. With, with, within a day or two, he begins to review stuff to you. He begins to review stuff to you. He begins to review stuff to you. He begins to show himself and lavishly releases love upon you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the question is, how close are you to the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you spoke to him? Not refer to him. Not just make reference, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, and that's it. But talking to him, sitting down, acknowledging him, asking him questions. What does this mean? Someone asked me about the issue of COVID. I'm saying, I'm the, I'm the last person you should ask. Go and ask the Holy Spirit. What is he saying to you about it? He told me, None, nothing shall come near your dwelling. That's me. That's personal. That's what I asked. Then he revealed to me. He spoke to me. You're, you're covered. He spoke to me. Have communion daily. He spoke to me. Do this. Do this. Confess. Say these scriptures. Every night, say these scriptures. That's personal. He has to say things to you. It's really personal to you and your family. Even making sense. It's the nature of the relationship you must have with him. Now, now, listen to this. Listen to this. When we say communion, when we say, uh, as I'm sharing with you concerning this thing about, 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 about the Holy Spirit becoming real to your life, listen to this. Before I close. When we say minister, or mini, the ministration of the Holy Spirit, when he ministers to you, I looked up the word. One of the things it, it, it talks about is it's to work deep in. And when you're ministering to, when he's ministering to you, he works deep in you. You are allowing him, giving him jurisdiction, giving him permission to work in you. No holds back. No reservations. This is what most people are scared of. Because they're scared he might correct you on certain things. But I, I remember giving this, this, this thing. There, there, there was a person, I remember, that they came with a seed. And God showed me, they want you to bless what I'm not blessing. I, I've had several cases. Oh, but I remember one case of this, 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 this lady. She, know, she knew what she was doing was wrong. But she wanted a blessing. I want you as an individual to allow God to minister to you. This week we have a fasting program, Monday to Friday, where we are, we are, we are just seeking the per perfect will of God concerning our lives. You ask the Holy Spirit questions. So when you say to minister, it means to work deep in. May the Holy Spirit work deep within you. When you say to minister, it means to work effectually. In other words, it's effective work. The deep work of God, it's, which is effective. It's effective when, he's, when, when, he, when weaknesses, when issues are being dealt with and you're, you're being refined by him. It's working effectively or effectual or intense operations from within. Woo. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what, what corrections have you had lately? That's how the relationship is with the Holy Spirit. What corrections have you had lately from him? What has he told you to stop? What has he corrected you on? What has he rebuked you for? What has he, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, try to align it, put to alignment in your life? If not, you're not giving him room. Ask him. You show, you tell him. You reveal it to you. Ooh -wee. Praise God. Mm. You see, you see, the, the, the challenge is you can't continue claiming to be a Christian and not give him room or time or chance to work in you. It's, the minister is to work in is the intense operations. God wants to do stuff within you. I, I think the old school, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, but this, is, this was my view or this has always been my view. People, you know, people are scared to go in, in this type of dimensions and depths of the Holy Spirit. They, they thought, they thought they were going to be missionary. No, no, no. It's, it's about a relationship. I can give an example, correcting you. Don't do this. Don't say this. Don't do that. that that's what a relationship is. 
You allow him to work deep within. You feel it. You sense it. The other thing is when you talk of, of, of minister, ministration, it means inner spiritual workings. It's, it's not just physical. We are not talking about physical faith. It starts from within coming outward. If you can't work within you, it's difficult. You bump into miracles once in a while because it's a gracious God. But if you want to consistently flow and see greater manifestations of the power, demonstration of God in your personal life, you have to allow him to work to have spiritual, inner spiritual workings. So fellowship now with him is what allows him, when you offer yourself, when you come to fellowship, to talk to him, to worship, to adore him, to honor him, to love him. That's why, that's why, that's why David, and all that is, David would say, and all my soul, and all that is within me. You know, you are, you, you've, you've looked deep within, within yourself. When you say he encouraged himself, it's, it's allowing him to minister unto you. It's when you give yourself. So fellowship is what it does. Fellowship. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So, I, I, there, 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 there's one thing I want you to understand before, before, before you close. Is the number one, acknowledge Him. Ac, don't, don't say it, acknowledge Him. First Corinthians, let's open these scriptures, then, then we close. I think I have five minutes left. Woo. First Corinthians chapter, I think you know I know this scripture. I love it. I love this. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know you not, know you not, that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Don't you know? Don't you know that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? So if you're listening to me, if you receive, if you, if, if you have received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit lives in you. If Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, the one who is in you is the Spirit of Christ in you. Jesus is in you through the person of the Holy Ghost. So if he is in you, he is saying, then say, don't you know? Why are you having all these problems? You, this, the greater one who is in you, greater is he who is in me than you, is the Holy Spirit. Woo! He is in you. You must acknowledge that the Holy Ghost is in me. That changes everything. He is the game changer. When you acknowledge him, you see, when you acknowledge him, it changes it. Don't you know that the, your body, that you are the temple of, the, of God, and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you, are the temple of God, and the spirit of God dwells in you. Acknowledge, I acknowledge the Holy Spirit that he dwells in me. He's my friend. I have an intimate relationship with him. He's my companion, the great companion. He's my teacher. He's my helper. Allos Paracletos. He's my everything, the Holy Spirit. You have to get to a point where you be sober when you're talking to him. First Corinthians chapter 18, chapter 6 again. Chapter 6, verse 19. What? When it's second time, what? <laughs> no, you not. That your body is repeated again. Is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Which is it? Not which will be. Which is it? Who is in? He is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. You have, you have him of God. And you are not your own. Wow. You are not your own. You are, in other words, you are owned by the one who dwells in you. If your body is his temple. Your body is his temple. That means he now resides in you. He is in you. Your spirit man and the spirit of God, when you got saved, they became one. Listen to this. Verse 17, first Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord, how do you become joined? When you received him. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. The word one, O-N-E, is the Greek word heis, H-E-I-S. It means singular to the exclusion of another. When you received Jesus, your spirit man and the spirit of God, they've become one. You, you are inseparable with him. He is in you. Acknowledge that your spirit is full of the Holy Ghost. That's why when he begins, when you do this, he begins to well to begin, he begins to manifest. He owns you. You are, you are owned. You are like his. Your body is not your body. That's why you say, look, 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 look at this. You are bought with a price. Listen to this, verse 19. For you are bought with a price. 
Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are bought with the you you bought you paid through the blood using the blood so that you become His. Your body is His the temple. Cancer can't can even feel day in your body. AIDS can't remain in your body. COVID-19 can't remain. Why? Because you are owned. You have to acknowledge. Don't wait till you are sick to do these things. I'm teaching you body of Christ. Don't wait till you get sick to acknowledge. Oh, you're, you're my, you're, you're. No, 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 no. Say it now. I'm owned by him. No sickness, no disease. That's what can dwell in my body. I'm excited about the, about the guy. If you remember the guy who was called uh, John G. Lake, Alexander John G. Lake. Ah, the, you see, not Alexander John, but John G. Lake. John G. Lake, they put a virus that it was, I can't really remember the details, but they say it must have been a ball. They put on, put on his body and on, under the microscope, it died. He would go into the fields where people were doing this stuff. The guy who started AFM, you need to read this better. Amazing, that miracle worker. Now, you see, I'm not saying go out there, start where you are. Acknowledge the Holy Ghost. I can't have this headache, this pain, this growth. It, so part of this is the body of the Holy Spirit who dwells in me. I am owned from today. I want you to make this declaration that I am owned by the best. I'm owned by God. The creator of the heavens and the earth owns me. I am owned. <laughs> so today you can sleep. You say I'm owned. I'm his. I'm not of my own. And this is more than a bandage. In the back. I'm owned by him. We owned by him. So your body is his temple. He owns you. When he says greater is he who is in you than he who is in you. It's the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. The Father tabernacles in you. Remember, you don't have power in you. You don't have force in you. You don't have, you don't have any energy in you. You don't have any eat. You don't have, any, you don't have a bed in you. No, 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 no. A bread in you. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You have the Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Because of his presence. Remember, let me let me give you the last scriptures before I pray. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Let me show you something. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Verse 5, it said, you shall receive, not many days from now you shall receive power. But Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, but you shall, not many days from now, verse 5, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But he said, verse 8, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Wow. So he is not power. But he is. When he comes into. This power. Power is a result. Of having him in your life. You have power. The creative power of God. The power that raised Jesus. From the dead lives in you. All you need to do. Acknowledge him. I love you Holy Spirit. I, I sing songs of the Holy Spirit. I adore you. are so wonderful. You are precious. You are glorious. I love you. If you are, if you, if, if, if you are a person who has not been doing so, just repent before you. You know, he knows you. He loves you. He wants to, you have hated him. I will teach you about hating the Holy Spirit. You have hated him. You need to say, oh, I'm so sorry, Holy Spirit. I'm sorry for hating you. I acknowledge that you are so precious. You are wonderful. You are my everything. Oh, I'm so, I will be lost without you. You are my teacher, my helper, my counselor. You correct me. You rebuke me. You are my, I, I love you more than anything in this world. Oh, I acknowledge you. You are so precious. You are sweet. You are wonderful. Oh, none can compare to you. You are marvelous, awesome, so loving and so lovely. Who can be compared to you? The incomparable one. I love you. I adore you. Then you begin to sing songs. You are sweet. You are so precious. Oh, we love you. You, be, you begin to sense him. You begin to, he, he begins to well from deep within you. Oh, I begin to sense my, from the top of my head, especially, I begin to sense this, this, this thick presence, more like a blank, like, like, it's more like a helmet. I say this, when I'm talking like I, I, it's like someone is putting a helmet upon me. It's the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Your soap, I acknowledge you. My body belongs to you. Every growth, every fire, every weakness, everything. You begin to rebuke it from the point, you know, from the standpoint of knowing what you have. have the Holy Spirit within you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I pray and I hope you've been blessed with these sessions. I pray that you, 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 
you, you, you, you will have passion for him. Intimacy matters. May God bless you. May, may the Holy Spirit reveal himself to you. I pray that he instills this hunger in you. Unquenchable hunger. Quenchable thirst. Oh, thirst that nothing can quench. I'm, I'm praying for you. May you experience the reality of who he is. Ooh. Precious Holy Spirit, we repent for taking you for granted, for doing and addressing and talking about any other thing except you. We've asked you questions, prayed and fasted for months, but never asked you. We repent of it. You have been given as our teacher, the truth of our lives. But we thank you that we have been forgiven, washed by the blood. I pray for those who have been watching today. I pray that they experience the reality of God. I pray that this hunger that has been instilled in them will haunt them. When they wake up at night, they, they will go after you. My soul longs for you. My flesh longs for you. Oh, I long, I thirst, as the psalm says, long and thirst after you. I pray that it becomes your portion. In the name of Jesus, may the rain of the Holy Spirit come fresh upon you. May you begin to experience the reality of who he is. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for ministering unto me today. I thank you that my life will never be the same again. I believe Jesus is Lord. I receive him as my personal Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm back again. It will be 5 p.m. at 5 p.m. I'll be ministering again. 5 to around 20 to 6. Just 30, 40 minutes. Just ministering unto you. Come, let's just, let's just let's move this week for, for an encounter with God. Get yourself to a position, a point where he becomes real to you. Hallelujah. God bless you. May God honor you. May God bless you. I pray that this... Jumps that something fresh, something new in your life. Hallelujah. We love you. We are, may, may God bless, may God honor you. Remember, we like always do, we take up offerings, we put in the, it on the screen. After we, 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 we turn off, you have the details to show, you know, whether you're local or abroad. Thank you. I thank those who have been faithful, even, you know, you know during the time when we stopped, the, when we had to break the, the, the month of this, the three weeks or so of the break. I mean, may God bless you for being faithful, for just keeping us, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. God bless you. We love you. And may God honor you. May God increase the anointing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. See you tomorrow. Hallelujah. God bless you.